Hi, welcome back. So this is the state of our mini application right now. If we type anything in these fields, it adds this person. But if we type just in one field or if we don't type anything and we click add person, it doesn't properly show validation messages. It just doesn't submit, but it doesn't show validation messages. Let's fix that. And on top of that, on top of adding validation, let's actually move all of this code, this on change and on submit code and outsource it into a custom hook. This solves a couple of problems of which that we reduce the code that's written inside of one component. Plus if we need this on change and on submit in a different component that has a form, we'll just import it from that custom hook and not have to write it again in that component. Now, uh, credit where credit is due. This custom hook that I'm about to write uh, was not originally written by myself. It was written in this cool article by this guy called James King. Although I'm gonna uh, apply a couple of if improvements to make it more simple and uh, more usable in our use case. Of course, I'll put a link in the description for this article. Anyway, enough of the theory and let's get to the code. All right, so let's go to our app here in form. And by the way, if you don't have the code, um, if you're just starting on this video, you can just go uh, to the description, you'll find the link to the Git repository and grab this branch, use memo ref, and you'll get this code that I'm about to work with right now in this uh, stage. All right, let me remove the terminal. Uh, first of all, I want to remove this use memo and print number of people. I just use that to demonstrate the use memo hook. Although I'm going to keep the use ref so that we can focus on the first uh, name input. Here I'm going to create a validator function. So here let's say const, um, const validate, um, let's say validate person data or form. And this will take a couple of values which are just two, the first name and the last name. And here, this is a common pattern that I usually use for validation. That is, um, we have a error object and then we add to it some keys. And if the error object later is empty, that means we have no errors. That means the form is valid. So here what we're gonna do, we're gonna wanna say if values.firstname.trim equals an empty string, that means uh, our first name is empty. So we do errors dot first name, we add this key and let's say uh, first name must not be empty or is required, it's up to you. Here, let's copy this one more time and let's say um, here, select this and control D, last name. And here say last name must not be empty. And here we'll just return this errors object. Now the way um, the validation works with Bootstrap is that um, if you see this city field is invalid, it's red and it has this uh, message, this danger message. We can see here that um, it's right here. We need to add the class is invalid to the input and we need to add this div of invalid feedback with the text of the error in it. So here in our input, let's make the class name dynamic. So let's cut this form control. Let's do an expression, backticks, paste form control. And here let's do dollar sign curly brace. Let's check if we have this error. So errors dot, this is the first name. So let's check for the first name error. So if this is the case, so and and, then we concatenate is dash invalid. And uh, of course, if you have other classes, this can pose a problem of if you don't like this white space, you can use the uh, class names uh, library, but I'm fine uh, with this for now for this example. So here, let's copy that and paste this and say, if error last name, then we add is invalid. And of course we need to add that div. So underneath the input here, we'll do an expression. So errors dot first name. So if we have this, so and, and do parentheses and here we'll have a div. So dot and the class is invalid feedback, invalid dash feedback. And inside of here, we're just going to put errors as an expression errors dot first name. So it's going to put the text. Let's copy this and go underneath this input and let's control D here and say last name. Now, of course, we're not going to see any of these errors right now because we're not using the, uh, the validator function. All right, let's actually start to move this code, um, away from this component. So this use state and everything 
Here in the source folder, I'm going to create a file called hooks.js. And here we're going to import use state from React. And here you can just, you can have a file for each hook or you can have a file where all your hooks are in one file. It's up to you which uh, convention you like. I'm just going to say uh, export const use form. And of course it's a convention when you're creating a hook to uh, start the name with uh, the keyword use or the word use. And this will take a couple of things. First thing is the callback. And this will be executed if the form is valid um, when it's submitted. And it's going to take another thing, which is the initial state, which I'll give it a default value of an empty object. And it's going to take a validator function, which I'll call validate. Now here we need this bit, this uh, person bit, except here, this is a generic use form um, hook. So let's say uh, values, and this will be set values instead of uh, person. And here we use state, but we pass it the initial state. So depending on what that form, uh, those form fields are. Here we'll say const, I'm gonna have our errors object and the set errors uh, function. And here we'll say u equals u state. I will just pass it an empty object because that's what the errors uh, object is uh, initially. It's empty. All right, let's create the on change. So const on change. Oops, change. It's going to be the same as in the component. So it's going to take an event. And here we'll set the, the values. So let's say set values. And here we'll have an ob object. We'll spread the existing values. And we will add the... So actually it's the same like this uh, in here. So we can just actually cut this and paste it here. And here we'll spread the uh, values instead of the person. Now let's create the uh, on submit as well. So here we'll say const on submit. We'll take an event. And here of course it's gonna prevent default. So event.prevent default. And now what we need to do is we need to run the validator uh, method or function and check if it returns any errors. So this is the validator function. We're going to pass it this one. So we need to check that this errors object that's returned from this function, it must be empty. It must have no keys. Otherwise, that means there is some errors. So here what we need to do, to do is if we'll call object uh, JavaScript uh, namespace dot keys and we'll pass it the errors, or well, actually not errors, we'll pass it the um, this validate function. And this takes the fields, so we'll give it the um, our values. And here we'll do uh, object.keys of validate values dot length must be zero, must have no keys. Otherwise, that means we have some errors. Now, if we have no keys, uh, in this val uh, in the error object, that means it's the form is valid. So let's call the callback. And here, actually, I'm gonna reset the form like we've been doing, like reset the values to um, null to like um, empty. So we're just gonna set the value uh, set values to initial state. And here we'll say else. That means if we have some keys in our errors object, that means let's set the errors. So here we call set errors and we pass it validate values. And now we simply just return these two. So let's return. Well, actually, no, we're gonna return the values and the errors as well because we're gonna need them. So let's return on change and on submit and errors and values, because we're gonna need to access these. Now here in form, uh, we don't need use state anymore. So here we'll import our hook, our custom hook. So let's say import use form, or actually um, destructure it, use form from, we go back one level to hooks. Now all we need to do is call it and pass it this validator function that we created. So here we'll say const, and we're gonna extract those values that we returned. So values, I mean uh, keys, uh, errors, and on change, and on submit. 
and this will be equals use form and this takes three things so the callback and in this case uh, I'm gonna change this one to let's say uh, add person or I'm, I'll call it add person from form just to not confuse it with the add person from the context so it won't take any event and it won't prevent default or anything actually we're not gonna use this as well it's just gonna add instead of new person it's gonna add the values that we get from uh, this use form and remember it's okay to put values here because this callback will only be called if the form is valid that means and if the form is valid that means these these values are actually valid so we can just do like this add person uh, values and because the form is actually being reset from inside the hook we can just remove this line and now our callback is ready now to you for use form we need to pass it this callback so add person from form we need to also pass it an initial state which is going to be a uh, first name an empty string and then last name an empty string as well and we need to pass it the validator function that we created validate person form all right so i think this is it let's save and check if this works we get person is not defined oh okay because here we actually uh, need to use values instead of person we don't have person anymore so here control d so change both of them to values and let's save I right, set person is not defined actually it's in hooks yeah here on change we uh, set values let's save all right so it works let's go to our app oh it's already invalid yes yeah, so the problem is actually here because this expression has to be inside of the variable so if we have um, a f an error first name then we return this we concatenate this string into our existing um, form control class we can just do this here as well and remove this and now it will not be invalid um, off of the go so it will start being uh, with v being normal so here let's actually add a person okay callback is not a function Oh, it's because we defined it actually after I think this is why the warning is here yeah we defined it after after we've passed it to the US form because it's not being hoisted because it doesn't have a function keyword now if we try to add a person now it should work and it does it adds it and uh, the number is changed and if we submit empty fields cool we get the validation errors and we don't get any added person here and if we put stuff here we get the validation error for the, just this field and if we remove this and we put for this we get the validation error for the, just this all right so our form is working oh actually it's not working perfectly because it's not clearing the errors once it's reset um, we can just um, here yeah here when we uh, submit the form and it's valid when we reset it we can just here set errors again to an empty object and this will reset the errors object so now if we have any errors and we actually now add in a person it actually resets it and removes or removes the errors as well all right so this is it for this video as you can see custom hooks are really powerful and they let us abstract and outsource our code away in custom hooks and use it in multiple components without having to write it again and again and as well this is it for this series uh, please like if you liked it subscribe let me know in the comments if you like react hooks and if you're excited about using them in your projects anyway as per usual thank you for watching and i hope to see you soon